Web Systems Week 6 Operating Systems Part 3 Memory Management As you recall the web is a giant distributed computer running on an operating system In an operating system it manages your computer it runs programs provides services to programs protects users and programs from each other In our web example we have an operating system that runs various types of processes out there like HTTP, Minecraft, MySQL, SSH. So what we're going to look at is how the operating system runs these programs and runs it in memory. So this is the last part. We'll talk about memory today. As you recall, processes are programs in execution. And the operating system loads a program into memory to execute. The operating system has to manage the allocation of this memory to a process. And we'll see how it does it in a moment. So what an operating system does in terms of memory management, a whole bunch of things. First of all, it allows us to run processes, more processes that we can fit into physical memory. It allows us to optimize our RAM, because it's very expensive, at least an order of magnitude more costs than disks. It keeps a track of where the processes are and what blocks of memory they own. It provides security, especially against against users and from yourself as well. So all processes should be independent. Decide where the process load into memory, into physical memory, I should say, and allocate and deallocate de memory as the process needs it. For example, a database might need to put a huge amount of information, like an index, into memory. So it might request two gigabytes of memory in one go. The operating system will allocate that accordingly. Now, memory is an interesting concept. All computers have physical memory. Usually it's called RAM. In fact, it's hard pressed to find anything apart from RAM nowadays. Although you might find that there's concepts called ERAM, and there's concepts with uh, GDRAM, your graphical high-speed video card might have its own memory as well but essentially all computers have this physical memory and it's very very constrained 8 gig if you're lucky um, most operating systems can work in a lot less for example Linux can run in half a gig for example and this physical memory to access physical memory use a concept called addressing in this case physical addressing so in the case of 1 gig oh, sorry 8 gig in this case my lowest memory address would be memory address 0, and my highest would be 8 billion something something. But the most important thing is that the operating system hides the physical memory from all processes. And what they do is a neat trick. As far as each process is concerned, it only sees its own address. So each process says, hey, I've got an address going from 0 to, for example, two gigabytes. Every process doesn't have to care what the actual physical memory is, the operating system does it. And this concept is called logical memory. So the key memory, the key point is, each process has its own address space, or its own logical memory. Typically, most operating systems, because they have to manage this memory, will allocate what we call a page of memory to a process. And this page typically is 4K, 4 kilobytes, but it's often larger. Some operating systems allocate it to up to 2 gig pages. You have to have a hell of a lot of memory to work on that one. 4K seems to be the typical average of Windows systems and Linux systems. The operating system says, hey, my process wants a logical address at a certain spot. It'll translate it. And that's called logical to virtual addressing. Okay? Let's take an example. Here's a typical example. This is the virtual address space of a process. It says I've got memory 0 down to 7FFF, which is an awfully large number. In this particular case, 2 gigabytes. So this process 1 actually, process 1 thinks it's got 2 gigabytes of memory. And how it allocates this memory internally, it's up to the program, up to the process, how it works. What happens is, 
these bits of memory, the stuff in light blue, are the actual memory used by this process, and they're mapped by the operating system to certain physical addresses. Do you notice this low one here, which could be, say, uh, at address 1 million, might map to the physical memory at, say, 1.5 billion. So it could be anywhere. And each one of these little blocks are pages, 4K pages. The good thing about this, it means that your programs can interleave, and I'll show you that in a moment. Your logical address space, this is the logical address space, can actually be larger than your physical memory. For example, this process thinks it's got two gigabytes, but the physical memory you've got in this system is only FFFF, which is, which happens to be 256 megabytes. Bits more memory, this one. So we can pretend we've got more memory than we actually have. Now, I mentioned a thing called virtual memory. If you recall the previous example, we had our, virt our logical address. We had 0 to 2 gigabytes. And our physical memory was 0 to 256 megabytes. Virtual memory allows us to pretend that we've got more memory by putting the excess components the uh, 1.75 gigabytes onto disk. So we can fake it if we want to. Virtual memory makes the hard disk or part of it look like main memory to the process. If you're in Windows, I think this is called pagefile.sys. Or it could be something else in different operating systems. For example, in Linux, this paging space could actually be a raw physical petition. And here's another way of looking at it. This is our memory, our main memory. And our old example was 256 megabytes. We can take a chunk of the hard disk, say 1.5 gigabytes, to pretend that it's actually physical memory. When I talk about memory, there's a few terms I'll have to talk about. VM does not stand for virtual machine, it stands for virtual memory. Our swap file, that's part of the disk used for that virtual memory. Our pages, and I think concept called a page table. Basically, it's an index, like our file storage example, to all the bits of memory. So in the case of, in the case of our previous example of 256 meg of real memory, we need to store something like 64,000 64, 4K pages. So our table would be 65535 um, entries telling us where the actual physical memory is. Paging is when we swap a page out from memory to disk. And a page fault is when you're trying to read a chunk of memory that doesn't ex that's not actually in memory, we have to read it off disk, the process is blocked and then and the process is put into a wait state and then the page required is read from disk called swap back from disk. So it reads it from disk into memory and then the process is back into a running state and it reads that memory. Often because we like to be fair, that block of memory in RAM might also be swapped back to disk later. And there's a final concept called thrashing, which is not good news. It's when your CPU, your, sorry, your operating system, is spending more time paging than actually doing anything. And you'll see this in Windows, especially when you're, you're using a lot of memory. A program might be really greedy, for example, reading, creating gigantic chunks of memory. You'll spend more time reading the disk than actually doing processing. In that case, your system gets very, very slow really quickly. Here's a worked example of the concepts I mentioned earlier. Process A. It actually has five pages of memory required. Okay, so maybe five times 4K. It's got three pages actually in physical memory. And this is the location, one, three, and zero. Let's take a look. 
process A, it's page zero, it happens to be here. Right, that's two, one, two, three. It's page three, it happens to be physically located in page in memory in page three or frame three, block three, whatever you would call it. And page four happens to be located in 0 to 4K. Process B, that's got a lot more pages, but it requires six pages, but it's only got one in memory in frame two. So process B, its second frame, page goes into frame two. Which is probably uh, it's, uh, it's zero for that's probably around eight k to twelve k in memory, right? So both processes are running and they're accessing the RAM. Now the interesting thing is, what could happen is if I am trying to access process A, page one. What it will do, and I'll just clear this memory for you. If I'm trying to access page one, which is basically on the disk, it'll say, hey, page one, it's not in memory, I'll have to read it off here, maybe put it here for example, I'll access that, and the old RAM is actually swapped out to disk, so the old RAM swapped them out, that's why it's called swapped, I read one in, I read one in, and I read one out. So you typically, actually, I think I've told you a lie. It's swapped out first, then swapped in. My apologies. Virtual memory is great. It allows you to have more memory than you physically have in the system. But the downside is it's slow. You really should try to minimize paging. The best way to do that is to add RAM. Simple as that. As much as your system can physically handle will make your system run smooth as silk. The reason is disk is really slow. Maybe a hundred to a thousand times slower than RAM. So what the operating systems do is they try to minimize paging. One of the classic things they do is they have an algorithm called locality. They try to guess where I should page and where I shouldn't page. There's two main ways they do it. One's called temporal. So if I've accessed things recently, for example, I might have a cache, I might access a piece of memory at the same time multiple times. For example, it could be a, an icon on a screen, for example. The icon doesn't change, I want to keep it in memory as long as possible. Classic example is loop variables. So if I have a temporary variable that I want to access in a fraction of a second later, keep it in memory, don't swap it out. The other way to do it is called spatial locality. A good thing about spatial locality is if I'm going to access a block like this, set array one, two, three, four, five, and so on, it's most likely I will be accessing seven in this sequence. So I try to keep the memory together as much as possible. So don't swap out that element of array because you're likely to access it in the next few seconds. And that makes the system more efficient. So today we had a quick, ease, a very, very quick guide to memory management. This stuff is actually in the innards of developing operating systems, and it's usually a complete course by itself called software engineering or computer system engineering. So we looked at the difference between memory management, between physical RAM, what's in memory, logical memory, which is also related to virtual addressing, and virtual memory. Do not confuse virtual memory and virtual addressing. And finally, we saw that having not enough memory is bad news because you end up with a huge amount of paging and your system will thrash itself to death. And you'll never get much out of your system again until you reboot.